करते Good afternoon. I hope everybody is good. Hello. How are you? Hello, Mr. Allen. <laughs> What's on my mind today? <laughs> it's cold. It's too cold. <laughs> Outside is freezing. That's what's on my mind. Cold weather. How are you? How are you doing, Alan? What's your topic today? Hello, my friend. How are you feeling? Hi, Miss Katty. How are you? I hope everything is going good. Just coming on to say hello. Nothing really interested. Just sitting here bored. So I said, let me come on Facebook and see how everybody doing. What everybody's saying. You know, this is our only playground now, right? Facebook. This is the only place we can come and see some friendly faces. Say hello. What else can we do? <laughs> There's no way to go. Nothing to do. What else can we do? But come on Facebook. The only place nobody wanted to come in the first place. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to be on Facebook. But now, Facebook is the only place to be. <laughs> the only place to be. I'm good, hon. Had a negative result. I'm happy. I'm so happy for you. That's good. Continue to be safe. Thanks a lot for everything. I really appreciate it. Wow. Yes, people. I'm just sitting here and thinking about all the good times, all the spare times, all the freedom we used to have. No, we don't even know if it's ever going to be um, that normal again. I'm sending you requests to come live with me. Okay. I'm wondering if we're ever going to be live again, ever. If we're ever going to have that kind of... If we're ever going to have that kind of freedom again. From the looks of it, it looks like it's not going to come to how it used to be. Hey! Hello, Alan. What's going on? I'm good. How are you? I am out waiting for the bus at the bus stop. You always at some bus stop. What is going on? <laughs> I am. I'm gonna call I am, you the I am, bus I am, stop, man. I'm going to Staples <laughs> to print some documents. Okay, okay, okay. So what's good? Do so you what do? are you, what? What are you discussing today? I, I I don't even know what I'm discussing. I just feel bored and come on. I'm like, let me come on to see how everybody's doing. I don't really have okay. a topic. I see. You have one for uh, me. Is there anything you want to talk about? I'm willing to talk about it with you. Okay. Um, I, I, one question I had for you. 
Um, what is what is really going on with this new home? I haven't heard anything in a while. Oh, because um, there is no significant change in the eruption. It is still, it is still an effusive eruption um, with the volcano in St. Louis and the Grenadines. That means, um, all it means is that magma mm -hmm. is coming up from the earth crust okay. and it's just spilling out on the on the um the floor in the in the crater, okay. and it's building this little this little dome. But no other significant event has happened. So that is why you will not hear anything because. They, they don't want to come every day and report the same thing, you know? Okay. So when something significant happens, they will come and say, okay, well, or oh, the boss come, but <laughs> I'll take another one. <laughs> okay, okay. They, will, they will come and say, well, okay, well, there is some earthquake and you have to evacuate. But um, nothing significant has happened. Just the same old thing, that means the magma is still coming up seeping out on the um the crater floor and building the little dome um you're smelling sulfur and so forth but nothing significant has happened and um i think the doctor um professor robinson have already gone back to trinidad and tobago okay they have put up enough um they have put up enough monitoring equipment mm -hmm. so they can keep an eye on the volcano and see what is happening because they have um, webcams up there okay. and they have um, earthquake monitoring device. They have heat monitoring device. So if, if there's any significant change in the temperature, mm -hmm. they will be able to tell well they, it is heating up and then they can check the webcam or they can check the earthquake device and see if there's any earthquake and get a better analysis as to what is happening. And if, if, things, are, if things not, if all of these things aren't happening, simultaneously and in rapid succession okay it will give them an idea well probably the volcano is getting ready so, to behave bad okay but otherwise there's no significant change okay so from your perspective what do you think about the volcano stuff yeah well i mean life goes on yeah you have to live your life you have to live your life as as regular even though there's a threat of the volcano to be erupted, because you have to remember that a volcanic eruption cannot be predetermined by anyone. Exactly. No matter how many monitoring instruments you put there, yeah, yeah. no matter how many webcam, no matter how many earthquake de detector devices, no matter how many heat detecting devices you put there, no one can determine whether it's going to erupt or not. Exactly. Right? So, and the earthquake and the volcano may just decide I'm going back to sleep for another 50 years, mm -hmm. right? So what people have to do, people just have to go about and live their life as normal. But bear in mind that the volcano is active. Yes. And it may change from being an effusive to an explosive at any time. Oh, God. So it's, people just have to live their life, but pay attention to all the signs. Wow, that's a lot of stress. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of stress for people, especially those who are living um, close. By. close and you, you would imagine that if you are living close by mm -hmm. and you're not getting information, like evacuation information, where we are going to go and support, it will compound the stresses, right? Yes. Because yes. If, if, let us say, there is an eruption, an explosive eruption, and, um, and um, people have to go somewhere, it will ease the stress if they know where they are going. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. How they are meeting, where, they are, where we're going to meet. And so forth. Exactly. Because if you go somewhere as a community, it is less stressful because you have people around you who you know, and you could be, you would be at least. Exactly. So that that is basically my my take on this. But but it's worrisome knowing that um that could happen plus COVID. How is that gonna be? Like I don't understand what's gonna happen because people are gonna be worried okay, about now, catching COVID. Coronavirus. That is a great concern. That's a great concern because remember we not only covered we have we have dengue fever going about too. Yeah. And remember the um according to the the, the, the numbers worldwide, mm -hmm. it is over a million people have died from COVID virus. Jesus so we know Christ. that COVID virus has the potential yeah. of taking life. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is why the authorities need to put things in place because this is what happens. If you're going to evacuate people. If it comes to that stage where you have to evacuate people in a season 
where the COVID virus and the dengue fever virus is, is spreading. Yeah. Right? You cannot evacuate people in the same old manner. You have to limit the amount of people you put in one shelter. Exactly. So, like, for example, in 1979, when they had the last ev evacuation, 1979, you could have put, you could have put, you could just put people in a building and say, okay, stay here. Yeah, yeah. Because they were no, no coronavirus threat, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So now that there is a corona threat, you can't yes. do that. You have to determine how many square foot of space you are going to give to each individual yeah. in the shelter. Exactly. So, for example, if a shelter is um, 50 by 50, how many people are going to put in there? Mm -hmm. Right? And how, how much you have to space the, the, the living compartments of each person? Because remember, this is not business as usual. Exactly. This is a trying situation, a, tra a testing situation. Right? Yeah. So you can't do business as usual. So these are some of the things that the people who are in charge, like the name of people, yeah, they have to come up with these things because it is critical. It will be hard critical for me. Time, yes. To, it will be hard for me to leave my home. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's a pandemic. Yeah. To leave my home running from the volcano and run into mes uh, Mespo or uh, uh, Barley yes. to get COVID-19. I have my child get COVID nineteen and die from COVID nineteen. Exactly. You understand? It's very it doesn't horrific. make sense. Yeah. That is why people have to be concerned about the threat of COVID nineteen mm -hmm. as it relates to the threat of the volcano. Exactly. Because they are two separate and distinct threats. And what is happening? They all pose serious but different dangers to the community. Exactly. It's very worrisome, man. I would think they would have already set up stuff like that already. Well, you see, even if they set it up, it doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. in order for things to go smoothly, the people who you're setting it up for mm -hmm. must have the information that these things are in place yeah. so that it will limit their stress. Not only would it they limit their stress, but they will, they, will, they will know exactly where they're going and what they're going to. So in case... People start doing contrary <clears throat> to what is expected. Yeah. They can speak up and say, okay, now you are not putting my life in danger. Even because once according to danger. Nemo. Yeah. Because according to Nemo, for every 50, 50, 50 square feet should have X amount of people. And now you have XY amount of people in 50, 50 square feet. You understand what I mean? Exactly. So now people can now stand up for their own rights. And speak up because they have the information that is needed to keep them safe. Yes. If you don't have the information that is needed to keep you safe, you do not know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And then you, you find yourself in a situation where dangerous things can happen because they were not proper planning and the information was not exactly. properly disseminated. It's like running from the smoke into the fire. Yes. You don't want to jump out of the frame pan and jump into the fire, exactly. get cooked anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What what can they set up like the schools and stuff for, to put those people in? But the thing is it right? Now, as, as I tell you before, we have um three chats to these people are in the Grenadines. Yeah, three of them. The first chat is the volcano, mm -hmm. right? The second set is a chat is covered 19 and the third chat is the dengue. Yeah. What the what did what the authorities need to do is they need to retrofit a, a schools to put covered 19 pub, um, positive people in. Exactly. For example, for example, now if you have to evacuate um the people in the red red zone and one of those posts in the red zone become covered 19 positive, uh -huh. you have to find some way apart from the shelter to put them in, exactly. right? So if you have all of these things already in place, when an individual become COVID-19 positive, you don't have to worry because you know, okay, um, we are in Barley, right? Mm -hmm. The people are housed in Barley. If you are COVID-19 positive in Barley, in a shelter, yeah. we send you to lay you to the primary school yes yes or yes. to the primary school in barley so so let us say the primary school in barley is whole is hosting um 
evacuants from the suffering. Mm -hmm. If anybody in the community becomes COVID-19 positive in the evacuant community, now we send them to the secondary school yeah. because there is where we're going to house those people who are COVID-19 positive to ensure that it doesn't spread exactly. within the evacuants. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. So the people need to be thinking and they need to think ahead because yeah. it's, it's positive critical thinking is yes, what is going to save yes. life i think they're waiting to last minute to do stuff yeah you can't wait until last minute when people like is a is a, is a trip uh the bus is coming again so i have to take this one <laughs> all right then it was nice talking to you be safe it was a pleasure speaking but to you you don't have any yet, mask i have my mask here okay 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 <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right. so when i go on the bus i put it on all okay. right take care you too all right i just know how to get out how to get out okay yeah. all right <laughs> yes, people. We're just talking about um, critical thinking and what you should do if you're in the Caribbean and um, you're trying to figure out what they're do gonna do then if there's a big spread of coronavirus on the island. Because remember, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of um, what you call it, ways that you can catch it down there. These places are so small. Everybody is so crowded, especially in the market sometimes. The market is so crowded. And people are not, some people are not even taking this thing serious. You understand? Anyways, people, I didn't come on to talk about coronavirus, but I would like to know if you guys are okay and if you guys are staying safe. Okay. Keep on practicing safety. Protect yourself, protect your family because this thing is really serious. And there's a new strain of um, coronavirus out there. It's mutilating, it's whatever they're calling it. It's, it's whatever it's getting worse people so make sure you protect yourself okay protect yourself understand this too shall pass okay this too shall pass understand remember they have to hit their numbers okay they have to hit their numbers stay out the way okay the free train is coming stay out of the way understand people don't be in one of those numbers okay don't be one of those numbers i want to see you on the safe side okay i want to see you on the other side all right we shall overcome we will overcome all right people have a good night Thanks for coming on, Alan. Bye. Be safe.